Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about the Razor Syntax. Now the Razor Syntax is sometimes called Razor Markup because it goes in the CSHTML files along with the HTML markup language. The Razor Syntax is integrated with the HTML markup language and the Razor View Engine can see the Razor Syntax and then perform some sort of command based upon the Razor keyword that accompanies the Razor Syntax symbol. Now the Razor Syntax is very easily identified because it starts with an at symbol. And that at symbol indicates to the Razor View Engine that there is some sort of special command to perform. Now some of those commands are implicit expressions and those are called implicit razor expressions and those are expressions that are recognized by the razor view engine to render specific content so if you see an at and then some sort of expression like at date time now the razor view engine will see this at date time now and perform the action of calculating the current date and time and just simply rendering that value as part of the html markup now the thing to remember about implicit razor expressions is that you're going to see some sort of single command, either a property or a method that accompanies the razor symbol. You will not see any sort of spaces or calculations being performed. However, with explicit razor expressions, you do see that. You see an expression that is evaluated by the engine and it produces a result. So you can include something like date time dot now minus time span dot from days with five as the parameter being passed into the from days method. And that would produce a date and time exactly five days ago. Now Razor explicit expressions are simply code that are surrounded by parentheses, which follow the at symbol. Now these are typically very simple expressions or maybe very simple calculations. If you're looking to do something more complex, then you can actually perform a Razor code block. And Razor code blocks use open and closed curly braces to encapsulate some actual C sharp code. So for example, here we have the at open curly brace var greeting equals hello world var greeting length equals greeting dot count and then a closed curly brace. This would set two different variables on our view, one called greeting, which is being assigned the value hello world, and then a second variable called greeting length, which is equal to the number of characters in the greeting variable. In addition to performing these kinds of functions, the Razor syntax also have something called HTML helpers. So HTML helpers actually generate HTML code blocks for us. So for example, if we did at HTML.beginForm, this would actually produce a open form tag. We'll be taking a look at the at HTML.beginForm uh, HTML helper in the next video when we design a form using an HTML helper. Additionally, there are the Razor directives, things like the at using, at model, at inject, at inherits, at functions, and at section. Each one of these key Razor syntax words does a very special task with the Razor engine. We've seen that the at using directive allows us to bring in a namespace into our view so that we don't have to type the full namespace path to a class. We've also used the at model directive to indicate a specific class that is going to be the model that should be used for that view. Now the Razor syntax also provides us conditionals. And this way, you don't have to write out entire C-sharp code within one of those code blocks. You can actually use one of these conditionals to perform regular tasks within the view. Things like if, else, else if, and switch. These conditionals will behave and act just like a regular C-sharp code block, but they're going to be used within the view instead. Similar to the conditionals, we also have loops. So for, for each, while, and do while. These again behave very similarly to their C sharp counterparts, where they are some sort of looping statement where you can loop the HTML code repeatedly. There are some other keywords to keep track of, things like using, try, catch, finally, lock, and default. You can probably guess what the try, catch, and finally all do. 
but you may be a little confused as to why you're seeing the at using statement appear again. If you think about C Sharp and C Sharp classes, we're allowed to use the using keyword both as a namespace identifier at the top of our classes, or if you're planning on implementing some sort of class that inherits from the iDisposable interface. Any class that inherits from the iDisposable interface has a dispose method on it that performs some sort of task when the class is being disposed of. This is a way of keeping track and cleaning up any sort of memory that might be in use by that class. In the next video, when we talk about creating forms using the HTML helper, we will additionally be using the using syntax for when we want to use a disposable instance of a class. And finally, because of this razor syntax, there's a couple things that you should probably know as well. The at with the colon renders characters as HTML. So if we did at colon email colon at model dot email, you would get the result email colon Joe Swanson at home dot net. The first at symbol followed by the colon indicates to the Razor view engine that whatever follows should be interpreted as regular HTML or text. However, on the same line, we see a second Razor syntax, which is actually indicating that the Razor view engine should look at the model and grab the email value. Additionally, since we're talking about emails here, you may want to display the at symbol by itself somehow as actual text. And to do that, you just simply use a double at symbol. So this email admin at at mysite.com would render as email admin at mysite.com. So that's just a quick review of the Razor syntax. In the next video, we're going to be actually using quite a bit of Razor syntax and HTML helpers in order for us to create our form that we have on our website. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me that thumbs up so that I know you guys enjoyed it. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notified whenever there's a new video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys at the next video.